Yeah, well, when I was like five years old, maybe six, we used to play sandlock baseball. So my older brother, he's like maybe six years older than I am. And I was probably like five, so he had to be around 11. When I got two strikes on me, he would be the DH. He would come up and hit, and I would stand next to him and then run the base. So we were like the first designated hitter. We didn't yeah, even right. know. I would be the runner. He would be the hitter. Could you run back then? Yes, I could run. Yeah. But he'll say, let me take your last strike. You know, when I get two strikes on me, let me take you. And so as I got older, I would do it to my younger brothers. Oh. You know, when we're playing Sandlot, if you got two strikes on you, think he's going to strike out. So he'll stand next to me, and then I'll do the hitting, and then he runs like that. So it was like, it was like being the, uh, having a DH at, back then. One strike DH. <laughs> when I was a kid, I wanted to be, I would like to be a cowboy. And I used to watch the Westerns on TV. And then um, I found out those cowboys was actors. I'm like, oh man, you know, so no, I couldn't be a cowboy because I found out it was fake. So then I, I wanted to be a stuntman. But at that time, back in the 60s and um, in the 70s, there wasn't too many popular uh, black actors as there are now, so I couldn't really be a stuntman for John Wayne or something like that, maybe from a distance. So I was interest, more interested in being a stuntman than playing baseball. I went to uh, the Screen Actors Guild walked in the door it was on it was on Santa Monica Boulevard I think and I was I was a kid and I I, I told them I said hey I'd like to be a stuntman and they said they needed a thousand dollars to join oh, yeah the and then, guild. yeah and then you had you get a uh, your union card and then you have somebody uh, get an apprenticeship with someone to work with you but you had to pay that up front and it's not saying that you're going to get an apprenticeship to someone to work with you, but, you know, that was the first step for them to get money so you for you. you from Barstow? Yes. To, yes, yes, I did. And one thing when we traveled like that, when I would travel back then at that age, as long as I had gas money to get home, I was okay. I didn't worry about eating. You know, like if we went to Vegas... As long as we have gas money to get home, <laughs> we're okay. We didn't worry about eating. Yeah. So it was the same way when I went to Los Angeles. As long as I had gas money to get home, I would, I would be cool. I was thinking, you know, no money for education because we had 10 kids in our family. So and I was the fourth oldest. So my next thought was to join the military. I guess you can make money and be a stunt man at the same time. <laughs> the benefits from the military after doing a few years would help you with school because there was no way um, no way that I could um, afford school and my dad had passed along when I was in the eighth grade so my mom still had like seven kids at home to raise that was some still in diapers so the only way I was going to go to school, really, was to join the military a couple of years, get the uh, benefits from the military after I get out to pay for school. But I ended up going to the junior college because at that time, all the junior colleges in California was free. So all you had to pay for was your books. So that's to me, seemed like a pretty easy deal, you know. I could work during the summertime on a little job and get book money, and school was free. So that led into me being able to play baseball at the college, junior college level, and football. We were playing a tournament in uh, Holtzville, California. They had this big uh, junior college tournament down there. And at the time, it was the Angels Complex uh, before they moved over to Arizona. And a scout by the name of Larry Barden, he saw me playing. Matter of fact, the day he saw me playing, I was pitching. And we were pitching against the, uh, I was playing against the number one team in the nation, junior college, was Yavapai. I beat them, I think, like 7-1 to one that day. And so by beating them and playing, he thought I was a pretty good player. He didn't know I played another position. 
until he came back and he brought his dad to see me play the next game when I was in another position. I think I was playing first base because we didn't have a first baseman, so our outfielders were pretty good. And so the coach had me at first base. And so he didn't know I played the outfield regular. His dad liked what he saw. So then he came to Barstow and he asked me how come I um, never went to any tryouts. And I said, because all the tryouts that you guys have, you already know who you want. You just bring other guys in to help them out. And I almost went to one tryout. The only reason I didn't go because my, my mom wanted me to go to Utah to this church convention thing. So I had to drive her up to Utah. And it was at the Angel Stadium. And I only wanted to go because it was in Anaheim at the stadium. There was 2,500 people trying out. <laughs> so those are the kind of tryouts you get when if you have an open tryout. People just show up from everywhere, you know. And so out of 2,500 people, I don't know how many people you think they kept. I don't know. I have no idea. But I didn't get to make that trip. So same way with Larry Barton. He has an open tryout. And everybody shows up. So how are you really going to get looked at, you know. So I told him that. I said because of so many people show up. You already know who you want. And so that, that was it. So he liked what he saw. Well, in between that, UCLA had came to, and and so the head coach for UCLA came before Larry Barton came, and I told him I was interested in going to school, but at the time UCLA wasn't as a powerhouse or real good in baseball like they are now. It was USC and Arizona State, and I was saying to myself, if one of those schools came to me, I'm going to school. But UCLA for baseball, uh, but I heard they had a pretty good program there back then too. I ended up signing with the uh, Cincinnati Reds. And so my college coach, he tried to talk me out of signing. He said, oh, we're going to be better next year, this and that. And I explained to my college coach that there was many times I come to school, 8 o'clock in the morning, I have no food, don't even have a ride home after practice, which was a good ways for where I lived. And I come to practice, and you, and you don't even worry about if I ate that day. And he was like, oh, Danny, we'll make sure you get this, get that. I said, you have jobs here you can give to, our, to the athletes here. You never give me a job. You pass me up on jobs all the time. Well, I'll make sure I'll get you a job. You know, I'll make sure that. Because, see, at my freshman year, I made All-State Junior College. Oh, get you a job. We'll make sure you have food, you know. And I said, well, I appreciate it, but you give it to the next guy. <laughs> I'm going to sign. <laughs> but he didn't want me to sign, so I ended up signing mainly to help out with my mom. Mm -hmm.